The WordPress plugin ecosystem is a vulnerable mess. News stories like this, this, and even security WordPress plugin stories like this, well, they aren't uncommon. You've probably seen some of these stories of thousands of WordPress websites, if not millions. In today's video, I will briefly overview the vulnerable mess of the WordPress plugin ecosystem, in addition to mentioning just a few strategies that you can use to, I guess, mitigate against these vulnerable, messy, insecure WordPress plugins. Now, I'm using Hostinger, today's sponsor, to set up my demo environment. Using the Hostinger H panel, I was able to deploy my website in a shared hosted server, register a domain name, and if you desire, have an SSL TLS certificate issued to this website. Now, it's easy to deploy a website with a variety of features, domains, email, database, security. It's all right there in the H panel. For this demo, all I needed was a simple website with WordPress installed. Using Hostinger's setup wizard allowed me to quickly deploy my blog website. Premium shared hosting on Hostinger is affordable, reliable, and offers 24-7 support. If you're interested in learning more about why you should have your own website, such as a cybersecurity blog, check out this video. And using a hosting platform such as Hostinger is a good option. Even though this video highlights some of WordPress's problems, taking your ideas online with WordPress, such as building a cybersecurity blog, is still the best choice. And here's why. It's easy to use, it's free, SEO friendly, and it's easy to post actual content rather than having to manage the whole back end of a website. And the WordPress core is likely much more secure than you could make a website as a noob or beginner like myself. Using the code GC7, you can get 91% off for all annual plans. It's only a few dollars a month for every year. So thanks to Hostinger for helping me out here and on to the video. I have my sample blog website here. And if we look at the back end, you can see that I have a ton of plugins installed and all activated, and they're not updated either. Yay. It's pretty easy to identify which plugins a WordPress website is running by right-clicking, going to your uh, developer tools or inspect, debugger, and as you can see under WordPress content plugins, you have a few plugins shown here. So there you go, you already have uh, maybe some information that you can use. As you can see here, I mean, this is just a simple WordPress website. What makes this vulnerable? Typically, it's not the WordPress core itself that actually runs WordPress here, although there have been their fair share of vulnerabilities. It's frequently all of these plugins here, as you can see, which add and really make your attack surface so big. With increased functionality, usability, and convenience of all of these different features in WordPress plugins comes the greater responsibility and the likelihood that at least one of these plugins has some sort of vulnerable code in it. What kind of vulnerable code do plugins introduce? Uh, well, let's go over some of the most common ones. It's worth noting, WordPress plugins aren't special to any particular type of vulnerabilities. All websites can be subject to any type of web vulnerability. The WordPress ecosystem makes it just that much easier to add extra functionality without knowing what's actually running. So you could be importing some vulnerable code, of course. I mean, it's two clicks away. You install a plugin and activate it. And given how popular WordPress is, this makes plugins a great attack vector. Ooh, there's another cybersecurity word there. First starting off is injection attacks. Uh, so injection attacks, SQL injections, cross-site scripting are very common injection vulnerabilities. SQL injection attacks occur when SQL code or commands are injected into website forms. So think a comments section, for example, or some sort of input form. And once you submit the SQL commands, it exposes usernames, passwords, and sensitive data. Cross-site scripting, or XSS, is another type of injection attack, which usually accepts raw user input. This is typically in the form of JavaScript. When a visitor lands on this website, the browser executes that code, and of course, the malicious script is assumed to be trusted from the source. In addition, there is authentication and access control bypass. These types of attacks grant uh, admin access or user level access to WordPress websites through, you know, inherent security flaws. Weak credentials exposed through brute forcing, weak password enforcements, sharing of passwords over unencrypted networks, or even just making the session IDs visible in the URL are all possible methods attackers will use to bypass authentication and access controls. Next is insecure PHP and third party packages. So for novice programmers, 
PHP could be considered insecure due to the lack of knowledge and, and really enforcing of security controls. Uh, for beginners and newbies like me here, I could be writing some vulnerable of PHP code, upload that to a plugin, and have thousands of users download that. Take this obvious simple code as an example. Now, script critic Grant wouldn't know that using functions such as exec will allow code to be executed as raw user input. So crafting a string like this can expose or cause harm to user websites. Dangerous PHP functions such as exec, pass through system are all ways that insecure code can be introduced. Uh, now this isn't necessarily a WordPress plugin issue, but rather it's just a lack of general awareness of writing PHP. In addition, developers will use third party libraries to import extra functionality into their plugins. And if these third party packages include insecure code or PHP code, they can be chained in expose the plugin's core to vulnerabilities. Next is data exposure in arbitrary file viewing. Of course, this is going to expose personal data on a website, admin, users, and just personal data. Data exposure typically happens, of course, when data is not properly handled on the back end, such as weak or no encryption, flaws in the code which expose files to the public, mishandling of APIs, local file inclusion attacks, IDOR attacks, and so many others. Basically, just data exposure. Uh, yeah, so those are just like five of many different issues that WordPress plugins face. I will leave a high level article in the description below, which it talks about more vulnerabilities in WordPress plugins and just how they are used. So what can we do to limit our attack surface using those cybersecurity words for WordPress plugins? Well, of course, you have your obvious strategies such as, you know, if you don't need the plugin, don't download it. Keep plugins updated to the most recent version and look out for plugins that haven't been recently updated. Download from reputable marketplaces and you know, plugins that have community support. Stick to the WordPress core and of course, strong passwords is always a must. If you choose to have web hosting managed by a provider, it's imperative that you have a provider that applies proper security measures on their end. And a hosting provider such as Hostinger does a great job of adding extra security features to make sure that their website is safe. Hostinger's HPanel has a built-in malware scanner that detects for any malicious files on your websites. There is a plugins and security section, the exact topic of this video, which allows users to manage plugins effectively while providing information about keeping plugins up to date. So as you can see here, I have a few vulnerabilities and I can apply updates on WordPress. The HPanel also provides easy access to the access log so if you want to see unwanted traffic and prevent security issues or DDoS attacks, you can identify that. Hostinger also has a suite of server-side protection tools such as the CISO Shin, PHP Hardening, and various other tools. And finally, they have educational campaigns or pages dedicated to website security. So if you are going to choose a website hosting provider, Hostinger is, has got your back there, right? So it's really important and you need to make sure that you properly vet the web hosting providers. Now, quote unquote, these advanced strategies uh, maybe help you depending on you know what, what kind of WordPress website you're running, but uh, yeah. So what better way to start off the advanced strategy section with a security plugin, which helps you prevent other plugins on your website from, you know, exploiting some sort of service. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of security WordPress plugins that can be used, and it's sort of an oxymoron considering that you have security plugins protecting your other plugins on WordPress. Now, of course, there are different types of WordPress security plugins that one can install given the use case. You know, we have the malware, spam, authentication, active monitoring, logging. In addition, backing up your website regularly, that's important. You can reuse another WordPress plugin to, you know, add that functionality and maybe having an offline backup is a good idea. Uh, another strategy is to actively scan for your WordPress plugin vulnerabilities uh, by using some sort of database, plugging in your WordPress plugin name and seeing if there's any new vulnerabilities disclosed. And that's a good idea always good to do. Finally, you know, restricting your admin space to one user with a strong password and perhaps only using admin when needed and not giving out user access to anyone else is a good idea if you're running a website such as, of course, the blogs. Those are some of the strategies that you can use to at least reduce some of your attack surface when it comes to running WordPress. Thanks again for hosting her for sponsoring today's demo environment. Uh, make sure to check out that video on building a security blog, why it's important. 
And well, yeah, until the next time, have a good day.